let's go get our crown artwork and I'm going to do that by load backdrop and here is an image of the crown that I want to use it's quite large so if I click on the backdrop tool I can now access um, the sizing element for the artwork itself and we'll go ahead and get that kind of in the right proportion that we want to have and I'm going to rotate that because I want it to be off a little bit I think that looks pretty good so now it's time to turn that into an applique so I'm zooming in to get a better look at the artwork and I will select the run and stitch tool now I want you to before we start applying stitches take a look at these little areas at the top of the crown these are very narrow spaces so when we add satin stitches both here and here we're probably going to completely close up that area. So when I add my stitches, I'm going to do that outside of the drawn line. So left mouse click, left mouse click, and then when you want to add a curve, you do that by holding down the control key. And again, I'm going to go outside of that original drawn line all the way around what I guess would be the jewels on the crown and you have to remember to kind of try to keep it equal distance because your satin stitching is going to be fairly wide we're going to add some fabric under here so we most certainly want to make sure we are covering all our bases and that we allow the, the applique fabric to show through so I am left mouse clicking and holding down the control key to get those curves set and one more time over here and I'll bring it in and then right click and there we have it that's not too bad now I'm going to um, touch the backdrop tool to remove the backdrop and then I guess really the best way to do it, it on, is on the keyboard and hit control B and it goes away it's not too bad not too bad it's okay let's go ahead and select just the crown over in the color sequence view and I'm going to go to the command tab and change it from color 1 to color 2 because we most certainly want the digit 2 to stitch first now there's some cleaning up we can do first off on our letter I probably want to move this point this node down a little bit so that it's not extended into the applique of the crown that much we just want it to be hidden a little bit and this doesn't look so pretty so when I click on the nodes and I access the handles I can change that curve up here we could probably use a little bit more roundness to that actual jewel there same thing here and you know you can spend an awful lot of time fussing on all these details but you have to remember the end use for the design and in this case it's for a two-year-old's birthday which is probably going to wind up with chocolate cake and ice cream all over it a happy day for a two-year-old so let's now convert it into applique I select my digit and right click go to convert applique and let it do its magic and then let's repeat for the top now remember there are two different colors which is great that's exactly what I want because I'm going to do a pink letter and a gold crown Let's go ahead and turn on 3D to see how it looks. I think that looks just fabulous. Of course, I will always stitch a sample. We do have a little bit of closeness up here. So let's go ahead and pull these nodes apart. So we'll select two and three and just pull that over a little bit and see how that turns out. And we could do the same over here. Pull these two over a little bit. And, you know, like I said, you can spend an awful lot of time adjusting these nodes, but I have learned through the years to kind of just live with it until you stitch a test. Often it looks a lot better in the actual stitching than it does in um, on the 3D view. So there you have it. I think that's great. When you see next week or in a, preview, in a future post, we're going to show you how to use pre-cut applique shapes that we make right here in the software and how to apply it to the garment itself.